you know it's about to happen. Susan E. Winter is stepping back home right here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Getting situated. We about to do this. Get myself all settled in, get everything where it needs to be. In three more days, it would have been a year the last time Susan was here. But now she's back. Everything's in place. Veronica 619, the thriving intuitive. Everything's starting to roll up on my monitor here to my left. Your right. A little behind the scenes, us getting ready. My, I see my guest, my beautiful guest here as well. The real Susie Waller here. This is free TV on Instagram, IGTV, which is Instagram's YouTube. Uh, they have welcomed us and we are here. Uh, Narc Abuse TV Network, Narcissism, Relationships, and Recovery, right here on Narc Abuse TV Network. I've got some questions that you sent in to me. If this is your first time passing through here for Narc Abuse TV, this show is not about me. Nope. Regular viewers know that it is all about the guests, and Susan has been one of by popular demand, people wanted to have back on the show. She knocked it out the ballpark last year. Guess what? We're going to do three shows this time, not all in one day, but we never know what may happen today, but she's going to be back three times. So now you've got the heads up. She's saying hi to everybody. Come on now. You didn't come here to see me. Let's do this. I think I got this right. Hi. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I was freaking out. I never got any little red Yeah, sign. yeah, yeah. I was like, I "Oh my goodness." Hey, everyone, we were... can you see me? Okay. Yeah, little there right in go. there. Oh, that's perfect. Oh. I'm trying to get mine right too here. Uh the joys of uh live uh Instagram free TV here. Thank I you, my friend. I know we were just talking a moment ago, but um here they come. I was trying to give everybody a chance to roll in. The, you, can you see the highs? Uh, hi from Ohio. Uh, I'm going to read it from the big screen over here. Hi, Susan from Aaron Park. Of, I see Anastasia. Hi, yeah, Anastasia. Yes, right. uh, the pack uh, coach is here, okay. Anastasia. Yes. And uh, let's see here. Cindy Muaz. Uh, let me okay. just do this. I'm going to scroll up to the world. top. So everybody, let me see here. I'm going to try okay. to get as much. Hi, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, love from uh, Mirama. Love. Hi. I'm the MJ Jam. So oh, she loves the song. Uh, Susie Waller. Saying hello. Um, oh my goodness, Susan! You know, you I got it going on here. Wow! Look, me saying, "What's the link?" And I'm like, I had a hard enough time trying to find you. I never saw a little red button. I just started yeah. pushing buttons left, right, and center. You're so good at this. <laughs> and you showed up. Oh my goodness, oh, Israel! Man. Wait, you got one from Israel here. Of I course, you got uh, Debbie right? Williams. I'm just trying. To, I'm going to read them out to you. Debbie Williams, uh, thirteen thirteen from the UK. Saying hello to you, Susan. Uh, Cindy Muaz from New York. Uh, everybody, please, yeah, shout out where you are coming from. Shout out to where you're coming from. Go ahead, Susan. You were saying something? I said shout out to New York City in the house yeah. right now. Hell's Kitchen. Big apples in the house. Hell's Kitchen. Uh, Kadzim, uh, like I mentioned, is from Israel. She's saying uh, love you, Susan. Uh, uh, nice seeing you from uh, Alima. Uh, by the way, if you would like to... Uh, First time maybe passing through. I often ask anyone that's viewing the show, you can put in a fake name, put any kind of name you want, because I will butcher your Instagram uh, <laughs> name. So I'm just telling you that. I'm a senior citizen, so I'm going to tear it up. <laughs> Albuquerque. Albuquerque is giving you love uh, from Love, Mirma Love. You, love. Albuquerque. Uh, put in where you're calling, I mean, rather where you're uh, viewing it from or listening to this from Canada, uh, Rohan0131. Uh, you got Albuquerque in the house. 
Uh, Iran is in the house. Um, wow. Hi, Susie Q from uh, Mella Barb. Uh, I told oh, you I'll. That's I'll... Barb. That's Barb. This is my travel partner. Oh, she there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Barbie. You know. Barbie doll. Mwah, mwah, can I can I tell you something? What? I don't know if we're gonna actually have a show because this may be the show. It just keeps going. <laughs> Philadelphia. Uh, hi from Scrub uh, Suburbs of Philadelphia. Uh, love from Ukraine. That's from oh, Ocean Nine Zero Two Five. Amazing. I, I do want to say this. Ocean Nine Zero Two Five. Ocean underscore Nine Zero Two Five. Yes, love I do that. have your question, and uh, I will be presenting it to Susan uh, when we get to that. Um, I, I, I just want you to know that she's from Ukraine. Ukraine. Go ahead, yep, Susan. Anything her. else? Oh my goodness. No, no, no. San I know Francisco. Some of these people I know. Yeah. Oh my goodness! It just it keeps going. Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Terry Hughes, eighty, eighty two. Um, love uh, surfing the Instagram. <laughs> love uh, laugh out loud fun surfing the Instagram. She said you were like surfing the Instagram trying to find me. Uh, everybody I, I, else, or I, I she was, did. I was I was a nervous wreck trying to find you. Oh my goodness! Uh, I didn't know. I was waiting for the little red button. I couldn't yeah. find it. I just pushed everything I could. Yes, I just you know what? I just see it right now on on my other screen over here that uh, you were reaching out to me and you sent me a message. But hey, we are here now. Susan has landed. Kill the music. <laughs> now, now we are going to have some fun. I know we are because we always do. Um, from India, I just got to throw. I'm throwing this into you as Aww. it comes in. Uh, Paris, France. Abby, Abby here says hi from Paris, France. Hi, um, Abby. Dapper one two three four five says uh, hello from India. Um, oh my goodness. Um, Pack coach is giving you props because you did great by joining. <laughs> you, oh. you you figured out how to how to join me. Hey, wait. The first time you ever did an Instagram live was with who? I just wanted. To, I just wanted to hear you say that. I just want. Uh, it was yeah. with you, and you know what? We we had. It was one of those times when I was absolutely crazed with like other stuff, and yes, we didn't you, personally yeah. know you really. And so we nope. we said, okay, nope. maybe you wrote such a lovely letter, and we said, you know, we can give you twenty minutes. Yep. We stayed on for what two and almost and a half three hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. Three hours. Yeah. Almost almost three I hours. Had, so yeah. much fun talking to you. And Lauren, my media director, yeah. loves you. She's like, um, oh, my God, your vibes with this guy are so good. We, we love you, Paxton. Just so I, I have to know, tell you, you. Oh, you're so sweet. You did that show, and I got so many messages. It actually went crazy. They said, you guys should do a series together. And oh, now I was still green. I know. Now, you understand, I was still green. And so I was like, oh, you were great. I know how to produce stuff, but I, I was like, I, I don't know if she, if she's like out of my ballpark. You know, it's like, it's like, I'm not going to stand against the wall when it's time to dance, but that oh girl over there might make me, I might stutter before I ask her to dance. You <laughs> That's are the kind so of feeling I got. Paxton, it's like, you have such a nice oh You're such a nice man. I appreciate man. it. You're so easy to talk to. You know, that's part of it. It Whether you're dating or you're having this kind, if everybody had this kind of interaction in chatting online or a video conference with somebody they would feel like they wanted the date because you make me feel comfortable oh, to be with you. That's you so the sweet. gift. But that's, it's really the truth. That's the gift. You know, how do we feel in somebody's presence? And I liked you from day one and oh. I felt comfortable and it was so easy to talk to you and it was fun, you know, so that's, oh uh, that's what's really and, special. And, and I have to tell you, this so we yes, can put it on you, you will be getting well. copies. Yes, you will be getting copies of this without a doubt. And I do have to tell you that day, I was prepared for 20 minutes, <laughs> but when we got to, when we got to uh, 21 minutes, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, I was so happy, and it was almost similar to this. This is even more intense than when the first time you came on. I mean, it's still going. It's still, I'm looking at it. It's still scrolling, and it was so many people who wanted to talk to you, and there were so many questions. And at that time, I couldn't capture all the the, the comments. Today, yeah. I can with the equipment that I, I have I now. When they, I can capture everything and tell you who who was who wow. and what and what they said. And wow. so then I was like, oh my, there's so many people that I left out. I felt so bad for a few we days, can't. but I was happy to be with yeah. you. So we can't, um, you know, like when I do the YouTube live, I can't catch everybody. I try my best. Yeah. Oh, and then sometimes. My poor moderators are, you know, Anastasia is one of my moderators. We're looking at it. We can't find it. Somebody's asked a question. We keep scrolling through it. And then you see me going like this with my face in the camera. <laughs> sure. Like, this is really attractive. Like, going you're, like you're this. Like, Hang what is on, that? wait. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know the feeling. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely agreeing with you on that. It's hard to capture that. Oh, my goodness. There's just so many that have spoken to you. All right. Um, 
Uh, thank you very much, Veronica. I see what you say there. Yes, indeed. Great vibes for us here. Uh, can we ask questions? That's Cindy. Uh, Cindy, yes, you may. Now, what we're going to do this time uh, that Susan here has, uh, as it were, come back to visit us here uh, home, is like I like to call it, because so many people wanted you back since last year. Um, what we're going to do, if you have a question, feel free to put it in the question section, as some of you have, have started to do. I will make sure to get to those. The first thing that I will do is pull from the questions that were sent in first. Now, we have people that have sent in questions, and I will be tossing those uh, to Susan, and Susan will be uh, taking care of that. Susan gets to do exactly what she deserves to have happen to her, be treated as the diva of the day, <laughs> especially here on Narc Abuse TV Network. Uh, I will be fielding that, everything to her. She will Thank be answering it. Is, is the dog there? Yeah. Yeah, she's she's sleeping she, underneath. Okay. She she's so she thinks she's the diva. So oh, Nico, okay. well, I'm the well, diva. You got we're, that? we're gonna she's we're gonna have a little challenge on that today because you're the diva yeah. for the day. And uh, yeah. what we're gonna do is questions that were sent in. We're gonna give a nice mix and balance. I'm gonna go across the board doing that for Susan and a lot enough time uh, for you to respond back to her if at all possible. We're gonna do what we can, and if for some reason or another we need to go longer, keep this in mind. Susan will be doing uh, two more events with us. Uh, we'll be talking more about that later. But the whole point of it is, is for you to be able to contact and connect with her. And she can actually hands on uh, deal with you to the best of our ability today. All right. So I need to get to it. Um, okay. First of all, first question literally is connected to a posting that you had. Uh, okay. When they asked the question, I wanted to go like, see, see her video on YouTube. I really wanted okay. to. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. Let's just save it for the show. Okay. The question was, I'm a, I'm a great woman. Uh, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to edit this and shrink wrap this question. Uh, I'm a great woman. She's saying that she's a, she has a lot to offer, okay. but she doesn't want to come across desperate looking for a partner for life. She doesn't want to come across looking desperate. How can I, as a businesswoman in the corporate world, she's saying, get a partner or get a, a husband without coming across desperate? We just did. Well, thank you for that. We just yeah. did a whole live show on that. I think that was the last yep. live show I did on, on YouTube. Uh, so here's my question. If you know you're great, why would you feel desperate? They're, not, they're incongruous. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I would feel desperate if I thought I had a malady, I had some pre-existing condition that made me like immobile. Um, I, I felt inadequate. But if you feel confident in one tier of your career or your life, if, mm -hmm. if the, what do they call it? The quadrants of life. You've got health, You've got family uh, and personal relationships. You've got your success. You've got all these things. So I think I, I would take desperate out of the equation. Interested, yes. And for professional women, oftentimes they are alpha all day in the office and right. have not learned how to shift gears and be open and receptive to men and give men the green light uh, to let them know that it's okay to approach them. Because a lot of guys that I know um, want to approach a powerful woman, but they're scared. And we have to allow them to feel comfortable to approach mm -hmm. us by either smiling or having an energy that says, I'm interested in talking to you. So you, I, I'm really having a hard time why a woman with so much success and confidence feels desperate. Is, it, a, is it possible... Is it possible that she's looking at her her responsibility and success as a as a thing that's holding her back? I, I don't understand either. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Is it's a positive, isn't had, it? Well, I I think it is, but there might be some men who have said that they're intimidated oh, by it. her. Oh, got it. Got it. So yeah. th that seems to be the normal thing that the powerful women come up against. The guys want, to, and they start to see that men walk away from them or start to get involved and pull back. They start to think, the woman starts to think there's something inherently wrong with me. I'm unwanted. She starts to lose her confidence and her mojo. All the time, it's the guy 
who doesn't feel he has enough to offer her, especially right. if it's a higher position right. and she right. makes more money. They're like, why would she want me? So yeah. I can't. Well, yeah. He's not, he's, not the guy, he's not the guy for her then, if that's the case. We need a second comment from her <laughs> to clarify all this. And yeah, I thank you uh, for that. But yes, and, and uh, feel free. Um, uh, you know who you are. You mentioned you, you don't want uh, you want to remain anonymous, understandably. Yeah. Feel free yeah, yeah. To, to mention anything to us if you're here or uh, for the next show. Uh, I got to read one off the screen over here that was sent okay. in to me from, uh, I believe, one of your, your subscribers on your YouTube channel, uh, Ocean. Uh, underscore nine zero two five. Her name Love is you, darling. I know Louisa. Who this is. Okay, yeah, all right. I know. So you know what uh -huh. she Thank says. You. She says, "Dear Susan, I have a question about anger management and resentment towards your partner, and unequally, who's he, he is an unequally giver. He, he's 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 a taker. It's a taker relationship, is what she says. How to avoid unnecessary pain and hurt feelings for both uh, anger management." toward him being an unequal giver and he's a taker in the relationship is what she's asking. I understand this entire dynamic because we work together as cl uh, client and, and coach. Um, on one level, he wants what he thinks he deserves in this relationship. On the other level, you've been exceedingly clear as to what you're capable of offering. So this anger that you're feeling after these years of this <laughs> I want more give me more I yeah. you know I, it 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 can be very irritating um I think in your case he, we we talked about this before sometimes in order to pacify somebody you're going to have to give them some attention that fills them up and mm -hmm. they will be less clingy, needy, and you won't be as angry. But in your situation, it is what it is. And there are very, very clear benefits to you. And I have to speak in code because this is kind of a private conversation. Of it's kind of, of public. Without there are times that we find ourselves involved with somebody. And the reasons for that involvement may supersede pure love. Mm -hmm. And there is an arrangement that has been negotiated in the beginning, whether it's mm -hmm. I want you as the mother of my children, you're basically uh, there, I'm not married with you, and I'll have balances right, right. on the side. Or yeah. if it's look at I need a companion, um, and I know that you're not in love with me, but this is what we're going to do. So when people start to demand anything outside of the original agreement, we feel pressure because that's um, what we signed up for. And in it. this case, there was a specific agreement as to what each person would expect from each other. And her partner has violated that and is now yeah. pressing, 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 mm -hmm. to which her, she was exceedingly clear in the beginning as to what she could provide and what she was not able to provide. Mm -hmm. In time, all things change and you will have greater mobility and you will have greater access to other options. I, my remedy for a short-term fix for this person is to, for yourself and for him to, to supply the love and the warmth in areas that feel comfortable for you, that mm -hmm. are in agreement with your disposition and how you truly feel, little mm -hmm. things that show appreciation on a human level. The little cards, maybe make him some tea, show him um, the, the concern as a human being that oftentimes, it. oftentimes it's just the, the lack of recognition. You know, anytime we're in a relationship and we don't feel like a priority, we get cranky and bitchy and we yeah. push or we pull or mm -hmm. we manipulate. Male or, or male or female, right? What you're yeah. saying is male or female. This is not just like a woman does this. A guy will do the same, correct? Anybody does it, you know, yeah. so they get cranky. And so sometimes if you can't extricate yourself, the goal is what can I provide that doesn't cost me that I can easily do without anger and without resentment to pacify them and to acknowledge yeah. that I see them as a human being and I admire, respect, like yeah. them. For your survival, it's just it's to get. It's, so it's it's really her looking to see, and we're, we're using Ocean a, as an example here because everyone's situation is different, yes. but you're essentially saying approach it from a human standpoint. Uh, start with that first and then work your way to what's comfortable because 
what was talked about at the beginning, uh, somebody's feeling they're not getting the same deal anymore and somebody's getting frustrated. There are times that we no longer feel romantically toward our uh, partner, but uh -huh. we are in an extenuating circumstance where we are locked in for a period of time, whether it's because we're trying to divorce and there are children, whatever, and they are just aggravating the hell out of us. So if we can be compassionate on a human level, not sexual, not romantic, right. Correct. sometimes right. Right. just to be thoughtful on a human level, that will satiate the person that feels so neglected because they really wanted this, but you're giving them something. So it's right. a, yeah. a halfway point. I hope right. that helps. That, that was a beautiful way to say that. We hope that uh, works for you. Ocean, feel free uh, to comment some more. She, she did mention that uh, I am the taker and he is the giver. I know. So give <laughs> I know you know that. I just give, want to give, give, yeah. give a little yeah. bit more. You're getting a lot, but I know yeah. the pressure you're under. Give on a human level. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to mention to you is that Brooklyn Tanner, 1982, um, says, uh, in regards to the, the, the viewer that mentioned about being desperate, this is the comment uh, they mentioned. They said he's turned off by her masculine energy. Uh, this it's very is a possible. huge conversation. So we have two camps. We okay. have the kind of straight ahead, um, tell people who you are and be very forthright. And that's more, that more aligns with where I come from, mm -hmm. to be authentic and be yourself. And yeah. if they resonate mm -hmm. with it, fine. And if they don't, fine. If they don't, least, they yeah. get a very clear read of what you, what you are and what you have to offer. Right. But you do, you are open. Then there is the feminine energy camp, which is very lean back. And it very much demands that the man make all the moves. And so that is oftentimes a corrective measure that some ladies want to explore if they feel that they are way too in their alpha. And the only thing that that does, I mean, you can't, you know, it's, it's a, let me backtrack. It's a burden for women. And I want guys to understand this. Thanks. It has been a burden. We, we used to be pursued. You guys aren't, most men aren't pursuing anymore. And the ones that are, are creepy. So, you know, you and I remember Paxton, the day of courtship. I yeah, have, yeah. I, I, I didn't know what the him. I didn't know what the word date was. I, I thought it was. Yeah. I was a date is what you put on a calendar. <laughs> I, I, when I but you to, like a girl, you start courting, man. You, and yeah. court means you're gonna you're gonna finish this by not just the ring on the way leads up to the kiss and telling in front of all your friends. I do. So it wasn't like we we leaving each other. I'm locked so in, and there's nobody I, else for me. The, the, you and I know that when you pursue a certain person, it is yep. for these old school things that people yeah. think are a fairy tale now, like a monogamous yeah. relationship yeah. that yeah. has a label that is. It has a label. Yeah. You know what it is. Yeah. Right. Now, but in, in the entire evolution of women and the change in history and us being able to break the glass ceiling, I remember the 80s, so many of us. The women didn't help you. You think the women help you? Oh, no, they broke the glass ceiling and said, you're on your own. I had to do it all on my own. Now they're much more collaborative, uh, right? Yeah. So women have been taught to compete with each other. And then a yeah. woman has to go Absolutely. to work. And oftentimes where she works, she's got to be better than the men around her. And she has to be tougher to offset the fact that she's a woman, which inherently has this stigma of weak, getting over. Weak. Yep. So she's... Yep. So she's got to put on her big girl pants every day and maybe yeah. even posture a little bit. So the minute mm -hmm. she walks in the door to see you, it's a hard click for her to, to, it shift, off. to, yeah. to shift off and be soft and submissive. And, and I mean submissive, and I don't mean like, oh, you can have no, your no. way with me, but to cooperative, to, activate, to yeah. assist, to work as a team, because she has to go out and, well, as many men have, she's now got to go out and kick some doors down and and fire a few people or, or deal exactly. with not just men, but also women who are, who are nipping at her heels or also trying to fight with her as well. And then she's got to turn that off is what you're saying. Yes. And a lot of guys that I know that I work with tell me that, that, that they, they just can't talk. They can't, you know, they can't have an opinion. She's barking at them and that they're not an employee and that some women do not know how to turn it off because this is how they've been programmed to be and they don't yeah. know how to be one way at work and another way at home. So 
I, we, we are guessing. We don't know that she's in her masculine energy. We know that she's successful. It is a possibility. Yeah. And when we answer questions like this, Paxton, we do our best to read through 500 sentences that we would like to have yeah. that we don't. Yeah. So we, right. I try to shoot it from every angle possible because the, the pertinent questions I want to ask are not included. Yeah, right. right. So and, we're doing and, our best. And essentially, um, that's, a, that's what we're doing when we put on a show like this. It yeah. gives everyone here, everyone, I'm, I'm, if you see me looking off to the screen your first time here, it's because I have monitors here that I can look at uh, all in front of me. Um, I, can, I can tell you this. Susan is giving you an overview of how to react to a given situation that you may be in. But uh, the questions just keep rolling in as, you, as you're talking, um, which is great. Everybody, please don't give up. Keep putting the questions up there. Uh, again, first time you're coming through, feel free to put a name in if you feel emotionally safe to do so. Uh, make up a fake name. Everybody can be John Doe or Jane Doe with me. That's fine. <laughs> but whatever it is, put your question in. We're going to do our best. We've gone 27 minutes. I see the questions here in front of me on one screen as well as the ones in the comments. And we have a few more over here and down in front of me. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and have some fun. But I need to tell you, you talked to Ocean and Ocean said, ha ha, thank you, Susan. Uh, always, she's letting you know that she appreciated what you said. So it she didn't, it didn't get, it I didn't get lost. I, I love this woman. You know, there are times that I get to meet my fans and meet my clients yeah. and the amount of love I feel for them and that I get from them. And she is one of them. Yeah. I mean, it's just astounding. And I consider myself so lucky to have the people that I work with. I work with some amazing people. I've had my crazies. <laughs> we all do. When I, <laughs> I don't even, when I yeah. get, you know, I don't filter. Like I do the one thing nobody does. I, I still do one-on-one -on -one, and nobody in my business does it because they, no, they don't. It's they not don't. effective for time or money, but um, I, you know, I deal with people yeah. and I'm like, Oh my God, I want to know you. And then other people are like, I never know when I answer either a Skype call or a phone call. It's like being in the emergency room. I don't know. Am I getting a gunshot <laughs> wound? Am I getting a sliver? Am I getting somebody out of their mind? I don't know. And it's, that's, that makes it fun for me. I really don't know. That actually is a great analogy that's running through my little small head right now. That is too funny. It's like an emergency. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, that yeah, kind of that, that kind of sounds like my live chats. I actually, <laughs> I put them on and uh, and the things that I see that my guests never get to read. I have to read this to you. Um, Mel Barb, Melly Barb says one, Susan baby. is, it says Susan is 100, the diva oh. with two hearts. Uh, oh, and then Nick, Nika, Nika sends you some love and uh, a B for both. Uh, sends you some love, two hearts, and they say Susan. She's one of my uh, moderators love. too on YouTube. She's lovely. yeah, you got a lot of love. Okay, I've got to read uh, a lot to you here, and don't forget, everyone, please keep putting questions if you're comfortable in the question section on the IGTV live or the live format on your screen with the little question mark, or you can type it out. I, I can scroll and read it. Uh, it won't get lost, even if you don't see it on the screen and it goes by. I can pull it back up uh, with what we're doing over here. So go ahead and put it in. Don't think it's lost. Um, what I was going to read to you is some more off the screen, and then we're going to get to a question that people are submitting over here. Um, Mystic uh, mentions that I forgot to submit a question. Uh, feel free to go ahead and put it in the comments here now. Uh, no loss. No worries. Uh, we'll get to it. All right. Next question uh, off the screen here in the comments. Love Miriam Love, uh, if I said that correctly, says, I'm nine weeks pregnant and single. And I can't help but worry about the future of uh, dating as a single mom, um, especially considering uh, dating apps is what she's saying. Do I post a picture of me and my kid? What if a man asks if uh, essentially if she has children? You are currently pregnant as a single woman and you've chosen to keep your child. OK, so that proves to me that you want the child more than you want the partner. And that's an mm -hmm. important consideration. If you had to choose just one, listen, everybody would like the package deal. Most people would. And I ask right. a lot of women this that are trying to get pregnant, that want mm -hmm. to find the right guy, the pressure, pressure they feel mm -hmm. to find the guy, get married, get him on track and have a baby within that biological clock time period. 
And I've counseled a lot of women and I've either suggested that they freeze their eggs or do something like that, or that they ask themselves the most pertinent question. If I could only have, what is the one thing I cannot live without? Is it that I can't live without the child or I can't live without a partner? I know the preference would be both, but if I had to choose, Mm -hmm. And it seems to me by your telling us that you're single and nine weeks pregnant, that you have obviously made your choice. It is the child. So Mm -hmm. now you must go forward in confidence that the right man who will be having access to your life and your child's life will be somebody who wants to be there. Okay. Because Mm -hmm. there are men who want to be there. They want to, they want That's to absolutely true. lifestyle with kids yes. and they didn't That's have absolutely them. true. There are yeah. women who, yeah. who never had children that couldn't wait for a turnkey lifestyle with step. That is true. That is absolutely correct. So yeah. please, I wouldn't hide it from anyone because you want to know from day one, this isn't something you, you know, you, if you're on dating apps and you show up, you know, like this, they're going to know. So this old notion about, oh, men don't want another guy's child. Some don't, and you don't want those men who feel that way, right? So you made a choice, get behind yourself, believe in yourself, get into an agreement with your choice, get on 100% on board with what you have chosen to do and believe in it and go look for the right man that thinks the same way as you do. Yeah, I I love what you've just said there because it's really a matter of preparing the package before the deal. You know, you have to, yes. you have to, yeah, get the package ready, which is you first, then the child yes. and become a team so yeah. that another team player will find you and go like, Hey, I'm joining yes. this team. And yeah. you know what? Hey, it's not like you need a captain, but, uh, we, we can be yes. co-captains. It's like, I, it, that, that is just my perspective. I'm not the That's expert. Perfect. You are, you are, I'm just saying from a guy standpoint, a guy, cause there are guys, you're absolutely correct. I've known many. And if women could hear the conversations that guys will have, one guy will go like, man, I will never do that, man. I'm not stepping into a ready-made family. That's, that's for him. And then there are other guys who go like, why not? That's, that's a piece of cake. If, because most guys that are like that are team players. And when you talk to guys that actually will take on someone else's child, per se, and make it their own, speaking of my dad, because he did it, <laughs> so, oh, and, and, and adopted uh, my, my brother, because you could never say he was your half-brother. My father would have beat oh. us to death if we would have said that. He goes, that's your brother. And we never knew different because he was a team player. My father was. So, therefore, that's what you're saying. It's out yeah. there. But focus on the package. Focus on the team. That's I what my mom that. did. She said, Absolutely. make make sure yeah. we have a package. And if this guy fits, then he fits. It's not we adapt to him. He's got to adapt to us. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. And, but but uh, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at some other things that are here. Um, are you ready? Okay, yeah. this is like emerging. Now I got emergency in my room. Like I'm, I, we got a cut here that's just pulled in, a gunshot that just pulled in. So here we go. Tried to send my question. This is coming from Danny Girl 1970, but it didn't go through. Uh, how many bald with a male friend who is the player lost me there? Uh, I've known this, and uh, I guess the guy's the player is what she's essentially saying, but this is what she's asking. Uh, she found herself. Uh, starting to fall for him uh, because he was giving her attention uh, and physical attention and giving her confidence. Uh, Is it unrealistic? This is the question part. Is it unrealistic to want to have the same kind of attention before he acquired my affection? So he has snatched her affection and given her confidence and given her attention. But she recognizes, and this is, I'm going to say this, he's a scrub. Because that's what I say on this. It's that's what I say on. I say that. Okay. I say that on this show. It's okay. a song by TLC. I, I know uh, I've heard it, but so, okay. I didn't know what so that's essentially the way I say it on my show here. He's yeah. a scrub. In other words, he, he's got no. He's got a hidden agenda, and it's not good. She's asking, is it unrealistic to want the same kind of attention again from him since he's acquired her affection? Essentially, he's wooed her or seduced her. Yeah. This is a specialty of area of mine. <laughs> I, I didn't dated, want to say it. That's why I, I picked this question out of the I comments. I players on purpose as a relationship girl with a very conservative sexual background where I had very, very few partners. 
like still single digit partners. So this was immensely difficult for me, but I was far more curious than I was frightened because I had to get this information because I had nothing to tell the rest of you. What am I going to say to you? Like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I have nothing to say. So here's how it goes with a player or somebody who's keeping a stable. The first light that shines on you, the attention, the, the, uh, the, the compliments, yep. they flood you with everything they've got. I mean, it, the light is so bright that, and it's so warm and it is so intoxicating. And yeah. you kind of know that it's way over the top, but you're just loving the drugs that are going loose in your body, okay? Your, your feet are not on the ground. Yes, <laughs> now that is to get you in the gate. Yep. You will never have that replicated again. That is Susan Ever. theory. Ever. It is the way it is the number one thing. They maybe take you out to dinner, you'll never have yep. them take you never out to have dinner it. again. Never. It's just to get you in the gate and then once they've had you physically, and yep. then once they know they've got your heart and they've snatched you, yep. then they start to put you in the stable, maybe keep you on a light simmer so they can access yep. you when they need to. You Absolutely. will never get that level of attention again. It is not a question of your worth. It is not a question of your beauty. It is not a question of your value as an individual. It is how they play. And you cannot change the stripes of this kind of animal. And nope. every girl who hangs on to that rough ride of hot and cold and hot and cold will tell you that she did so because she just kept thinking that if he just had more time to get to know me, he'd fall in love with me. And maybe, and he's been hurt. And you know, he had a rough childhood and they'll make up all these excuses for their, for their addictive gambling on this yes. love yes. that is a loss, yes. okay? Yeah. It doesn't get better. So if you wanna play the player, the only way is to say it like it is and, and to know that he is what he is, you cannot change that. Yeah. If you participate nope. in the ride, you do so yep. willingly. You know the end of the story as you go in. You see him if you're capable of seeing him and handling it. If not, you cut the cord. You tell him why. You tell him what he is. You cut the cord. He will be, he is adept at getting you back. The seduction to get you back will bring you right back in, but it's going to be the same story. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, steak, it whatever steak you got at the beginning, trust me, you're getting fast food after that. And, and you're going to be put on the shelf. Right. You're going to be put on the shelf. And as, uh, as it has often uh, come clear about women, women need uh, women are indeed a gift. They need to be unwrapped, not put on a shelf. Women are a gift. I, my dad, so nice. my dad. I learned that from my dad. Women are a gift, and and you unwrap them every day, every minute, every other hour. Whatever you get one hour, you won't get that two hours from now, and it's okay. But when a player comes around, he only. He, he's what, he's he's technically gambling himself. He's gonna do what he knows works, and if it works, it gets him what he wants. He moves on. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as in this case, she mentioned, he appealed to her mind and her heart, and uh, that's how the addiction begins. And then they win because they keep coming back to, they drain you of all your resources emotionally, mentally, and more. And um, the name of your show is Narc Abuse TV. <laughs> I tried to, yeah, I was going to leave it, but yeah, I technically, mean, that is kind of, if we, you know, yeah, very, very self-centered, self-absorbed. And the last thing you want is that kind of person when you don't feel well, or if you get injured and need to be taken care of, they're out. They're not going to be there for you. Yeah. And matter of fact, I have to say this to Dapper, Dapper one underscore one, two, three, four, five. You mentioned that you put a question in days before. Uh, do me a huge favor, please. Go to Narc Abuse TV. Uh, go to my Instagram page. People are doing it actually right now. Some are actually writing me uh, or sending me something. Um, so feel free to DM me during the show if possible. Uh, even if you have to leave the live, put the question in and come back. Or while you're here, put it in the section here in front of me. I'm going to pull a question. You got two of them. No, nope, nope, you got three. It just went up. You got three right here in front of me. Uh, Cindy Muaz, I see your question and others that are here that are putting in the questions in the comment section. I'm not going to ignore you. Just I'm going to go over here for a moment. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, hi, who and when should make... Uh, okay, I see what they're saying. So this is from Amir Moa. I guess I'm saying that right there. She's telling this to you, Susan. Who should make the first move? Who and when 
should make the first move when you like somebody? This is generational and it's changed a lot. In my time period, men made the first move. And in the millennial culture, men were taught by many dating coaches not to make the first move and to allow the woman to pursue. Um, I think if you want that person to make a move, the first thing you should do is do what I say is like you, like open the door, uh, show them that you're interested. You've got to give them a green light, make eye yeah. contact, smile, make it easy for them. Yeah. If they still don't get it and you think they're exceedingly <laughs> shy, just uh, go up yeah. and start talking to them. Yeah. Human being to human being. Yes. Where we get pressure is when we start to think of them as a romantic person. That's when we get all bogged down. So if, um, listen, I see a cute guy in the gym. I look at him. I start talking to him. I find a way to chat him up. I know myself. I can't help it. Yeah, so, and yeah. then we start talking. And then I let mm -hmm. it go. And if he keeps talking to me again, then I know, you know, something yeah. happened. But sometimes yeah. you have to open the door. Like I say, yeah. okay, we open the door. We do not drag them through it. This yeah. way we've done our yeah. job, right? Yeah. If you, gotta if, you, if you got to drag him through it, trust me, there's a problem <laughs> with him. There's a problem with him, but it's the signal that you're coming across a little too desperate. Uh, but but you made a very valid point there, approaching it just from a human standpoint, if you just want to have a conversation. But you said something very valuable. I'm saying it from a male's perspective. If he keeps talking to you, okay, you know, and that's different if he's talking to you about video games and he just, you know, and he's just talking about the Lakers or, or some sports team. That's a little different. Maybe he just needs, a, he's just talking to you because he's got a bunch of sisters. But if he's talking to you and he's trying to find a way to keep the conversation going and it's not weird, there's a pretty good chance you, you just got into his gray space in his brain. And most guys know what I'm talking about when I say gray space, because it's a I, I hate to say that it's the code between guys. But a lot of guys know if she's in your head, you're done for you. You can't watch TV. You can't you can't you oh. if you're working with a hammer, you're going to hit your finger and, and every guy around you is going to know something's wrong because the guys are going to go like, what's wrong with you? And you go, oh, nothing, nothing. Yeah, okay. Who is she? Okay, <laughs> it's like, so Paxton, who is she? Paxton, yeah. you're a man. I'm going to ask you for the women watching. All right, now, you know I'm not supposed to be doing this. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't do interviews. How no. <laughs> does a woman get into a guy's head? Uh, that we can discuss in the second show. <laughs> because, <laughs> because no, no, I've actually, I've actually discussed that uh, at least five or six times on my network. Uh, because I have daughters. I've, I've trained them to know what that is. Uh, when you get into a man's head as a female, there is nothing. It is very hard for him to get you out, out of his head. It is very, everything, every, forget songs, every meal will be about you. Everything. Because, because men, I just touched on this a couple of shows ago with, uh, Amy and her, and her, uh, her, uh, her friend, uh, uh, Nick, when a woman gets into a man's head, and I'll just say this, and then we'll get back to our questions here. The way you will know you're there is not because he's always reaching out to you. It's every time he sees you, he can't speak. If you're able to see him, forget, forget electronics. If you're Anywhere in his vicinity, he's off. Now, other guys totally can pick it up. Most seasoned women, or especially married women, or any woman who's been around men enough or have brothers, when, you, when a man, and that's all he can do, he will subconsciously have everything to do with that person in some kind of way, even if she's 3,000 miles away. He will leave breadcrumbs to everyone around him. He's thinking about her. And he Amazing. knows he wait, he knows he's doing it and he tries to fix it and cover it up like he's not. That's when it's really bad because he's really telling on himself. And if anybody's just watching uh, their brother or this, this guy that you work with or whatever, and you want to know whether he's thinking about you all the time, trust me, if he gets around you, he's not going to be talking like this. If he gets around you and he's stuttering, that's the first sign. If he has to clear his throat, if he if he tries to look look at you, but he keeps looking away, it's just all of these things that a man will do. There's, we could do an entire show on it. I've oh, never I've never done it. 
I've never actually, you and I have never discussed this. I've discussed it with a few guys that I've had, but I can't, I'll tell you this, I can't get a guy to come on the show and talk about it because most guys don't want to talk about it because if they do it, a woman will recognize, I got him. I I totally got him. And it's now how she gets in there is a show in itself because it's really simple. It's very easy to get to a man because a woman just needs to remember one fundamental thing. Our emotions run deeper than yours. That's all you have to remember. If you can tap into our emotions and what we feel about different things, preferably three different things, I'm not going to say what they are right now, but if you can tap into three fundamental things into a man, he's done. But he doesn't give it up. First of all, he don't give it up. You got to work for it. You got to get it. He doesn't give it up. He hides it. And, and you can tell what it is he's hiding. There's a way to know. And uh, this part, what I just mentioned, I, I haven't told I'm, my, I'm, I have, my daughter's going to hear this back and are watching. No, 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 I'm, I'm I will, I will tell that part to them, but there's a way to know. It's now the Paxton show. No, so no, it's not. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I've, I've, uh, I have tried for almost a year to get men to come on because men know. Don't, don't get me wrong now. This is not like I'm just saying this. This is, this is locker room conversation. This is, hey, let's go get uh, some, some, some ribs. Talk. Uh, let's just go grab a steak and talk. They will. You will not have this conversation unless uh, my father did it. We, you know, me and my brothers. He told us. But most men, and I found when my father told me, I said, I asked my friends and they were like, hey, and we talk about it. And go, oh, yeah, wait, my wife's coming. My wife's coming. Be quiet. And I would go like, that's just weird. Because in my house, we talked about it. It's like my sisters know. It's like yeah. it was common knowledge. This is the way you keep a man. You keep and you stay in his head. And when a man is not going to stay with that woman or not interested in, in her anymore, it's because another woman has got into his head. And, and, you, and believe me, you can always tell when another woman's in his head and if you're with a man. If, if that man is yours and another woman is, it could be his mother. You can, if somebody has a mother-in-law, you can tell when, his mother when your mother-in-law's in his head. Come on now. It's the same principle. <laughs> And the other, you can tell because you're going like you. You went over to your mom's first before you came home. This guy, like you know, hey, I saw this and I was thinking of my mom. Hey, I'll, he'll do the same thing anytime a woman is in his head, head including a coworker. Anyhow, why am I doing? We, we're doing a whole wow, other thing here. We're just brilliant. doing this, so brilliant. we're we're talking here. Uh, what he says, narc abuse is spilling tea. L laugh out loud. This is good to know. Um, I really, you know what? We should do. We should do it the next segment. I should. I should uh, send you. Uh, some of the pointers that that uh, my dad and uh, my older brothers passed on, and uh, we just lived by it. We just thought everybody else knew this too. And then I kept meeting people, and they were going I, like, I "How do you get a man?" That I was going like, "It's really simple. You do this. You talk about this. You talk about this, and you talk about that. And if he doesn't respond back, trust me, walk away from him because he's playing games. Because it's like pressure points on a man. And if a woman knows those pressure points and she just does it to every man." She's going to be sitting there going, like, why does that guy keep staring at me? Because you had that conversation with him. You hit that pressure point. And most women, I'm just surprised. There are women. I've, I've had other coaches and different people I've talked to. They know about one or two of the pressure points, but they don't know all three. If you know all three and you're a female and a guy's in the room, that's why you look at these movies, these black and white movies and uh, Audrey Hepburn and. And, and different people, uh, uh, you look at Spencer Tracy and uh, what's her name? I can't think of her name uh, right now. Captain, uh, uh, was Captain, uh, Captain Hepburn? yeah, Captain Hepburn. Captain, Captain Hepburn knew the, knew the buttons. You watch, you watch them two together when they're the Humphrey Bogart. And uh, what's her, what's her, oh, we were just talking about, Laura McCall. Laura McCall had the, and so when guys watch it, I'm doing it right now. I think of them right now, I get like goosebumps. You know how, how as a woman, you can go like the sweats and you get kind of warm when you think about certain yeah. guys? When yeah. it, guys get that. But it's not, we don't get warm. We get these little goosebumps that happen up here in the head. Wow. And so a lot of women don't know that. You know, guys know it. Guys that are watching this right now, trust me, if they were honest, they would probably want me to shut up right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> they because, certainly would. Because when, when a woman does that to a man, watch Spencer Tracy. Watch Humphrey Bogart. Okay. W watch watch uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart when he's with uh, Catherine Hepburn. Uh, I think it's in the, the movie Philadelphia. It's it's there. It's plain as day. Uh, Gene Kelly, when he's uh, with, I can't think of her name right now. Fred Astaire with Ginger Rogers. Okay. You can tell, guys can tell it. 
we just don't say it because it, it makes us a little uncomfortable because it's getting to something that makes us exactly like women. That's why you see the man carrying the woman's purse when they're like 70, 80 years old, because she got in his head. She didn't make him. She didn't make him do it, but he knows where his bread is buttered. He goes, he goes like, yeah, I talked to her. That or he just doesn't he, want to fight. Well, I, I, I take that back. Right. She, oh, nagged me. she nagged me to do it. Okay, I don't, listen. Just as many guys back to, sitting in the passenger seat because they want to drive and be told why they're doing it wrong. Wait, or, <laughs> or, she's, wait, or she's in his head and convinced him he is the worst driver on the planet. Oh, and he, wait, and he, he loves her so much. Or as, uh, I'll, I'll just say this. As my grandfather would say, he loves them ankles. That's what my grandfather used to say. He says, he loves them ankles. And I was a little kid. I would go like, that makes no sense. But as I got older, I knew what that meant because I'm a guy. Okay. He loves the, He loves them ankles. He like looking at them ankles. He like, <laughs> he like looking, he, he go like, baby, here are the keys. Here's a new car okay. too. Just keep driving. You know, so he, <laughs> she has him wrapped around her ankles as it were. Is my, okay. it's, it's really, I, I gave out information now that my, <laughs> that my daughters are going to go like, dad, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> okay. Uh, wild. Zeppelin says, love Bogey and Bacall together. I tell you, you watch it. Watch what that woman does to him. And it's not acting. They have a chemistry before they yeah. say action. And yep. she generated that chemistry. Yep. That's the key. If the man is generating the energy, that's a problem. He can wow. provide, protect, and guide, but he is not to be generating a romantic energy. That's the woman to do that. And if he does, if he lets it roll in, he ain't going nowhere. He, ain't go, he not going. He knows where his bread is buttered. He go like, there's wow. nobody. There's nobody but her, and uh, he will let you know that in so many different ways. I'm sorry, you guys. How do we get to? How do we let that happen? Because, I don't know. Because no matter who's giving the information, it's good stuff. When yes, you know, you we saying. can repeat everything everybody's heard, or we can come at things from a different angle that people haven't heard that they need to hear. You know, I constantly like to, I yeah. like to do videos and have conversations on the stuff that people don't talk about. Yes, yeah, without they, a doubt. You know, we, we know the pat conversations, like have the same values and, you know, show up and make an effort and blah, 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 and have some yep. humor in your profile. Absolutely. But the, the stuff that goes on is much more, like it's more finessed. And so sometimes discussing those little specific points that people don't understand or they've never taken time to break down is really where the gold is. And, and what's, what's interesting is we know where we're going with this show and we know today is an overview. So there are many of you yep. who are here and may not know exactly what our plans are in the future. Uh, thank big you. Wild, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Big plan. So, so many of you have put your questions in a number of things. They will get answered. We wanted to as really, this, this was honestly, I'll be honest, this was your idea because I was saying, we're going to do this. And you said, no, let's do the two lives before we do the next thing. Well, we'll, we'll let you all know that. Just keep watching. Yeah, just this is a warm up. This is a warm up. So many of you may have questions, first time meeting her, and you may say to yourself, wow, Paxton, let her speak. But in actuality, we know between the both of us, as you just said, uh, whichever way the information comes out, it's going to be helpful. But we are a team. Uh, giving you an overview of something that is coming. Uh, so yeah. you will be able to mark your calendar uh, and it is coming. What I do want to say is, is it, oh, you're welcome. Everybody's so kind uh, telling me and, and yourself, thank you uh, for what we're talking about and, oh, good. and talking about getting into a man's head. Uh, go ahead and put your questions in. We are actually collecting your questions as well, even if they don't get answered today, for a much bigger show that we're going to do. So don't get disheartened. And think that Paxton's going to do all the talking. This is all. <laughs> this is all choreographed and scripted. But here we here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? The guy I'm seeing is taking long is taking longer time to text me back. He will still hang out with me when I ask him out, but those on those day, on these days. But he can take up one take back, uh, up to one day. Um, I'm doing my best to read everybody's writing yeah, yeah. here. Uh, yeah. It can take up to one day to text me back. Is he losing interest? That's from Aaron Speak. So, Aaron, a couple of questions I would ask you. I imagine that you're being physical with him. If you're having sex 
and you noticed that he was active and communicating a lot and now the communication is backing down, of course, this is disconcerting and you're feeling uncomfortable about it. Now it makes you wonder, is he mm -hmm. less interested? Um, I think I heard you say, Paxton, when I ask him out, is that correct? That she's doing the correct. asking? That's from what I got there, yeah. Yeah, so if now the only time you see him is when you engage and you request it and there's a lag in communication, he's getting lazy and somehow I think you might be devaluing yourself. This is not Absolutely. to have you now play game and like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to see you because distancing does not make closeness. Um, but it is for you to consider maybe to go back to the drawing board and take a look at your behavior and take a look at your actions. Ask yourself if, even if you ask him out, which is fine, are you like desperate and clingy? Do you want more from him? And are you hoping yep. that the more, right. the more you give, the more he's going to respond? Because sometimes when we over give to a man, mm -hmm. uh, he just stops working. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, she's getting Absolutely. Me. Am I right? Yep. I, I, yeah, I know I you're absolutely correct. Here. No, you're absolutely correct, which, which is essentially uh, the benefit of us working together and doing this because uh, I'm not shy to put in my perspective and you allow me to do so, but I'm telling you, you are spot on. If you, and overgiving can be confusing for some women. What is overgiving? Yeah. I could tell you that when we get to show number two. <laughs> See, uh, over like over giving is go yeah ahead. go ahead well I, I was going to say um, it, you know it, I wanted to hear what you had to say but it, it is a give and take in the relationship Absolutely. and you have to one thing you can do is adjust within yourself and yeah. another thing you can do is if you are sleeping with somebody please you do have the right to speak honestly and tell this man what that gap does to you. And I do it from a different point of view that feels like empowerment. If I sense a gap and I suggest to my clients, what happens to you? The gap makes you feel disconnected. That's not to his benefit if he wants to get laid, honestly. Mm, so, well, right? No, so, yeah, I, I like what you're saying. Go ahead. So sometimes telling your partner what happens to you when they have a certain behavior will key back to what's going to make them happy. Um, we can't always know that what we say to a partner that we feel will have an effect, but certainly how it affects them, they're mm -hmm. interested in themselves. So if it starts to erode your attraction or your interest in the relationship, that's that's pretty telling that if you need contact to keep that to keep the uh, flame underneath flame going. the pot, mm -hmm. yeah, it's to his benefit because he's going to have a much better time with a much more receptive person that's not angry or bitchy or withholding or resentful. Why you know, why would he right? why would he dis why would he disconnect though, Susan? Uh, well, maybe there's a whole lot we're not asking here. Is he are you in an exclusive relationship? We are assuming they are, but they might not be. He might be casually dating, and that's the setup. You have to kind of know, don't be afraid to have fundamental conversations on structure when you enter yeah. a, a relationship. You know, if you, okay, perfect example, I'm going to tell on myself, I was nine years uh -oh. old, my dad bought me Toby the Pinto Pony. Yep. Fat okay. horse. Couldn't even put a saddle on him because it would slip off because he <laughs> basically had no withers. I mean, he was like a, an oil drum. And I remember my father, lifetime horseman, okay, yeah. gentleman rancher, said to me, watch me going around the pasture, and he said, baby, rein him. And I said, meaning take the reins. I said, oh, yeah. don't worry, daddy. He's going where I want to go. Can I tell you, Paxton, how many <laughs> decades that followed me through relationships? So I have learned the hard That's a good one. That's that a good if one. If you don't set the course, they'll Absolutely. set it for you. Absolutely. And their course may be circuitous and it may be a dead end. <laughs> so at some point, you've got to take the reins uh, if he's not going where you want to go. All right. Uh, do not forget. <laughs>
<laughs> ladies, by all means, do not forget this story. Because be the when you when you get married, you change your last name. And some people think, well, I'm just not going to get married. You you change your last name without even knowing it because you, you're succumbing to whatever direction he's going in. And you're going to be going back and forth. You better already have your own direction. Uh, or you're going to be on a Toby. <laughs> you got to be on a Toby. <laughs> Okay, so what we got here? I'm getting uh, I'm getting little things of people saying things flashing on my screen too. Is that cool? Oh look, that I'm is getting... absolutely cool from last time. Tony Do you remember Cruz? last time? Are you yeah. seeing that too? Okay. Uh, wait, which one? Tony Cruz. Oh, I got uh, Tony Cruz because I'm doing something where it's stuck on the very first beginning of what we had. Uh, is it? So, You're stuck. Yeah. You're, hold on one second. Uh, hold on a second because I have another question for you that somebody sent in. Okay. And I'm going to try to read that to you. Uh, nope. Uh, that was a repeat question. Okay, so we're good there. All of those are gone, and others are coming in all around us here. I am going to read this to you. Um, here we go. Uh, somebody's talking about movies here and other stuff. Just give me a second here. Uh, hi, Susan. Any advice on being discarded from a narcissist and watching them now move on? with someone else like nothing ever happened move on that's to from where? that's from gary harris 19 i guess okay. move on to another move on to another screen. relationship okay gary i think i've i think i've seen your name before i'm like mm -hmm. I, narcissists don't move on to something that's going to go anywhere but you you got the narc abuse guy right here so uh this is uh paxton delivering this um don't think somebody else is going to get the better version nope. of what you didn't get this is where we cut ourselves and put salt in the wound, and we all tend to do it, don't you? Yeah. Like every time, yeah. and ladies, you know too, you break yeah. up with a guy, and you see him with somebody new, like nothing <laughs> happened. He's now involved, and you're like, oh, my God. Everything yeah. I did to develop him, he's got the wardrobe I gave him. He's got the new shoes. Yeah. He knows yeah. how to... Do this he's and got that. the watch. He's got the watch. He's yeah, got the, he's this. Got yeah. this and that. He can say I gave him that. The theater. I took him to yeah. Florida. It was, yep. you know, it's she's going to get everything that I wanted. He, or this girl is going to give something to the guy that you wanted. But if yep. this person is truly a narcissist, nobody <laughs> gets anything but a headache and a lot of low self esteem at the end of that ride. So hey, nobody's, hey, right? Hey, if that. If that was your if that was your ex, you didn't even get the best out of them. So what do you think that you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if they had an ex when they met you, they didn't get the best. See the pattern? See the pattern? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. people don't change. Like we nah. can, listen, it is true that if we come into somebody's life, we are vastly different. They can be one way with one person and another way with us, but that's with healthy people. Okay? Yeah. That's with healthy people with a mindset to grow yeah. and Honest yeah. communication and some skill set for a relationship. Honest communication is, you've touched on it a number of times, e each one of these questions, you've kind of touched on it, the communication aspect in some shape, form, or another. How, this is going to sound really, here we go, we go with the dumb one. How important is honest communication and having a sit down about something that needs to be talked about, especially at the beginning of a relationship? So important. I... I do this before I ever hit the sheets. You do not want to be having these discussions later. I mean, if it's somebody I think I'm going to be involved with, I have, I God, I must irritate the hell out of a man. I mean, they have to listen to me talk and talk. And I figure if they make it through the first date and their ears don't bleed, we have a shot. Honestly, if, if their ears don't bleed. Absolutely. Well, come on, Susan. What kind of questions? What kind of questions? What kind of I'm conversation? You, my, Susan, my come on, give us the little, let us be the fly on the wall. What, what, what's happening with the conversation? Yeah, but, yeah, because, you know, I go through everything as the pre-qualification. Like, I, I put it all out there. There's no mystery to me. I got zero mystery. I don't have time for mystery. I love it. The girls that do, they're all like, oh, I'm mysterious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not perfect. I can't posture. It is what it is. I'm older. I don't have time. Yeah. I'm not don't have time. playing games. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be honest. I want to create something magnificent. And you got to know what you're working with. Wouldn't it be nice if you walked into a showroom to buy a car and they actually yeah. gave you exactly what you asked for? 
Not yeah. gave you, like a used car. It didn't give you like something that looked good, and then underneath you've got a lawnmower for a yeah. motor. You know, so <laughs> it's like that's how it is with bikes. shiny on the it's outside with nothing. Yeah. Tiny on the outside and ain't got nothing else to it. Matter of fact, so, you you getting all kind of love right now for what you said. I'm looking at it right now. It, okay, I just so, got to tell you what it said. An inquisition is what Ann says. Amber uh, says same same here, Susan. I resonate. Bleeding ears and, and all. She says when she's she's talking to somebody, uh, they all agree with you. No mystery is what she's saying. Yeah, right. But to get the best results, you say it like a, a positive monologue, as though you are revealing yourself and how you roll. Um, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not about making them feel uncomfortable. It is about this is, you know, I, I believe this and I jump to the philosophical. I'll have a so that they don't. Uh, one thing I, I have a little trick. Um, if I speak directly to you and make you comments, you're going to feel uncomfortable. I don't know what you feel. I've just met you yeah, right, um, right. talking. I will speak philosophically about what I believe. I will discuss it in a realm that doesn't make the person, the new date, feel that they are targeted. Right. I'll say to them, I like monogamy. We gotta have that conversation ASAP. So right, you right, better right. run if you're not. Right. Um, I like being honest. I think it's important to set a standard for everybody being comfortable. Otherwise it gets really uncomfortable later on. But you know, that's what I do. And then I see what they say. Mm -hmm. um, but I think an upfront warning and the honesty is helpful. I've always had, because my partners have been younger, I, I have always had one, one conversation I have had to have, and I, it's for my protection, actually. I explain to them that if the day or time comes that they get a little curious about what else is out there, please come and tell me and we will sort this out and go our at least give me a chance to talk it through. And if you need to go your own way, you will have my blessing. I'm not going to be happy about it, but I will not, you're not going to be bad or wrong. I understand. Okay. You're when younger. It, I understand. But when it I comes to communication, out, when it comes to communication, you want people to be honest. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And I tell them that they can hold me to this very conversation that I'm saying right now. I will not slash your tires. I will not burn your clothes. I will not torture you on social media. You, okay. I would rather you tell me what I don't want to hear. And I will respect you for being honest and honoring this conversation than to have me find out that you're duplicitous, have lied to me, right. have led right. me on a goose chase. And now I look disre uh, disrespected to the world. Mm -hmm. So that's a greater offense to me. I don't want to hear you're crazy in love with Sheila, but it, you're not going to be bad and wrong for telling me. I would you, rather you tell me as uncomfortable as it is. If we can't speak these uncomfortable things, we got no shot at a real relationship you, and nobody will ever feel loved if they have to hide who they are. They're just you not. Get, you get what result when you lay that out? Well, normally the scared mouth, run or uh, what? No, well, it depends. The mouth is normally dropped. The eyes are big. <laughs> Um, sometimes it's like overwhelmment. Other times uh, adult men have cried. You know, it's like, I, I don't know. I, whatever. Very, I, I can't. Very, very, varied, res varied responses. But you stick to that and making sure that it's clear. This is where I stand and this is the reaction you're going to get from me. But it's I expect this in return. Um, it's not that harsh. It's this is my preference. This is how you can. This is how it. I'd like to do it. So, so you state your preference. You state your preference. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on the fact that you're really, um, you're really informing women to state their preference instead of just going along for the ride on Toby, as it were. No, no, I'm just, I no, I really, that was a serious <laughs> statement. But I'm just, to me, I'm processing it as a guy. I'm going like, so you're just saying, hey, look, let me just clarify this to you up front. But you're saying you're not mean when you do it. Oh no, they don't. Uh, my only goal is to express my monologue at that point. I'm Got telling it. you, Got I'm it. showing you the manual. Got this it. This is the Susan Winter manual. <laughs> I love it. You may love not it. read the 37 pages. <laughs> Let me give you an overview, right? <laughs> kind of like this show. This is gonna, just an overview, yeah, right? Yeah. Your ears are going to bleed. <laughs> so here's how we roll. The chapter on communication, the chapter on fidelity, the chapter on this. I don't expect <laughs> you're going to actually take I could take see you doing time. that. I could see you totally doing that. From our but conversation. It's very elegant and it's kind of <laughs> cute. I don't I don't make them suffer. 
It's I very Catherine. It's Hepburn very Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, don't you don't care how they, how they respond. respond. That you cannot care how they respond if you're trying to reveal the truth. You can only yeah. be in one place. Are you concerned if they accept you, or are you concerned that you clearly articulate where you stand? They yeah. can choose or not. They are free or not. Yeah. yeah. I also have another conversation with men. <laughs> this is so self-revealing, but I'm not saying do what I do. Look at what is an option that you may not have considered and do what feels right to you. We're just trying to expand your ability to feel powerful and articulate who you are. Another option I will say to a man is sometimes- if it's, a family, sure, it's a family show. It's a family show. Just want to it, tell you that. It, it, <laughs> no, it, it, it is that if we think we might be physical with each other, it's a before family show. we are, I, I will say, um, it is my intention to love you. For me, that's what I want to do. You're not required to love me back. I would prefer that you do. But for God's sake, don't edit my emotions because you're uncomfortable with somebody feeling something for you because now you take the joy out of the experience I want to have. So wow. do not edit me because you are uncomfortable feeling something. And that's where they normally cry. <laughs> you know what? We we you know what we got we gotta have more show preps because this this show is really just a show prep show. This is not even a real show. This is kind of like just you and I talking. Okay, so oh, don't edit me. Okay, Susan, you and Lauren have to get together, and that needs to be a T-shirt that you sell in your in your store. You need to have a merch store don't that says me. "Don't edit hashtag Don't edit me." From now on, everybody, if you go to Susan's page, matter of <laughs> fact, today, starting today, if you can do it right now, fine. Go to her page and post anywhere on there and anywhere in the comments uh, for this show, hashtag don't edit me, especially you ladies. That should be your running theme that came from you. Hashtag don't edit me. Uh, I'm going to use that. That is perfect because this editing part happens whether you're sitting at a dinner table or anywhere. People can get a woman can get edited and not know it's happening to her because guys, guys can put stuff on the cutting room floor real quick and walk away. Well, um, emotionally, if somebody wants to spend this much energy and your capacity is this and getting involved with them is a matter of you shrinking to their capacity. Yeah. That's unfair. Do, do, do me you a huge feel favor. You feel. I'm not saying you have to love me. I prefer it. Like now I might not have that conversation with somebody. I think I had that some 10 years ago. But um, I, I mean, now I'd like it to be mutual, of course. But at that point, I had somebody that I, I kind of wasn't ready for a relationship with, but I wanted mm -hmm. it to be quality, whatever my interaction mm -hmm. was, no matter what label you put on it, no matter how long or how short, I strive to bring content, truth, yeah. and true emotion yeah. into it yeah. and human respect to make whatever yeah. it is rewarding for me for that's what me. i love that's what i really it's like about me. you i love <laughs> and it and they're the beneficiary as well you know it's just if you edit me down to what you're comfortable feeling then what do i, I now we have a problem I? right yeah. now we have a problem you know and that's okay it, it's um, you're talking, but it's blowing up over here because people are talking about that phrase. <laughs> I told you, you done started don't something now. Yep, you think I'm joking. I'm, look, I'll read it to you, my friend. I'll read it to you. It says, great stuff. Uh, stay in your lane. Uh, what, does, what does don't edit me mean? Now, you're talking while this is happening on the screen over here, and people are answering that question almost for you, but I'm going to ask you to repeat it again about the don't okay. edit and, and what it means. But here... Um, I'm going to read you something someone says here. Okay. Smart Click is the name here, the Instagram name, says nobody is allowed to edit me with an exclamation mark, uh, agreeing with you. Uh, Mystics uh, says it means making someone second guess themselves and influence how they feel and making them doubt their truth and how they feel. Okay, now, please, Susan, emphasize again what does it mean when you mentioned to someone, or now it's catching on, now you just started a trend, don't edit me. What does it mean when you tell somebody, don't edit me? 
when I tell somebody, don't edit me. There are many versions of this in different contexts, but the context for me is don't edit my level of emotions that I am capable of feeling and putting into this vehicle. It doesn't have to be forever. You don't, I mean, you, we can give it whatever label we want, but for God's sake, don't minimize my capacity because you have less. Don't make me less because you can't be more. That's Bingo. what it means. Bingo. Absolutely. I just needed you to say that if nothing else happens today, that is very important. And it's, it's taking a conversation in itself over here. Um, as you know, as I told you, I will be able to save all of this uh, and prepare it for our second show uh, and for our, our big event that we'll have later on. Big. But uh, this is, I'm telling you right now, you done started something over here from what I'm reading. <laughs> uh, but I need to get to some questions. There was a question okay. here that a young man sent in uh, asking you, and I'm just going to scroll up here. He was asking, how does a man... Uh, he wants to know, how does a man, let me see if I find it. Okay. Joe Mama Bear is the name. It says, how can you help a man who has been cheated on, not by me, is what she's saying, feel safe with you? How can you help a man who has been cheated on by someone else feel safe with you, with her? So a lot of that is his stuff and you have to see if he's working through it. All you can do, and this is all you can do, because half of it's him and the other half is you, is to be constant in your affection, to be forthcoming in what's going on, to understand, and to try to answer any questions that he has about where you are and what's going on. Now, if it tips to the point that you feel <laughs> that you're being edited on where you're going, what time are you, and there's yeah. a sign-out sheet by the door, and he's tracking your phone, you know, listen, a lot of people have problems trusting people once they've been cheated on. I would remind your partner, I'm not her, I'm me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that, and let's have an agreement. Here's what I'll do for you. If I think I'm attracted to anybody so much so that i would step outside of this i promise i will tell you okay you have to promise me you will be civil and handle that yeah. like an adult so yeah. that's the reverse conversation of what i would tell guys right what i mentioned before when it comes to them being civil uh, a lot of people that watch these shows don't they don't have anyone in their life to give them advice uh, many of them, children of alcoholics, children of divorce, m a lot of people watch these shows come from the foster home system. They don't have anyone to give them the advice you're passing on. What we're talking about is all fresh and new to them. And then wow. there are those who watch this show like this with you and I together because they want to know how to live life after a divorce or they're going through a divorce or a number of other things. So the, the audience varies. I want you to, to do this for me. I'm going to read this here. Okay. Smart Click says this is the basic of decency, honesty. True. So many people involve themselves in relationships, and it's he, whoever he or she mentions that, and others chimed in after that. You know, honesty always, and the number of things, piggybacking something you said. Please, for the audience that I kind of described to you, whether they're on the spectrum of leaving a relationship or non contact, whatever label, narcissist, whatever it may be. Or they're beginning, and it's a boyfriend. My audience has dropped all the way down to the analytics age of 16. Watch these shows now. So there's people who are green, and then there's people who've been burned. Why is honesty important? It's, it, it's twofold. One, our first task as a human being is to learn to be honest with ourselves. That way we can grow that way we can become the better version of ourselves. So that's tier one. Nobody can be honest with you if they're not honest with themselves. Number two, to have an open and safe place for communication allows you to have the opportunity to grow with your partner. Challenges are going to happen, whether it's a lover or it's a husband or wife. Challenges will happen, bumps come in the road, you're going to hurt them. They're going to hurt you. There are going to be assumptions. There are going to be misunderstandings. And instead of assuming, 
reacting and it's called the ladder of inference. So you, you observe something, mm -hmm. you assume something mm -hmm. from this observation, and then you quickly go to a reaction and make a yep. judgment about it without ever having discussed All the with your partner. Yeah. It just doesn't give any relationship a chance to grow. Now, I'm not saying that everybody watching this is going to find a partner who can equally match their skill set at this, okay. but it is worth trying to establish safety as a ground rule that this is our this is something I think we need to try. This is yep. a worthy goal yep. for us. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. There might be things I want to say that I'm scared to say to you. There might be things you want to say that you're scared to say to me. I don't mean brutal honesty like I hate the cellulite in your ass. I don't mean that kind of honesty. I mean That's diplomatic rude. That's rude. Yeah, yeah. Diplomatic, tactful discussions that need to be revealed because challenges will happen and we can't work our way out of it out of silence and resentment it's just never going to get resolved so the more that we can explain the more that we can listen the more that we can learn the more that we can dialogue we can start to get to negotiation where mm -hmm. the subject you're talking about becomes like this thing like okay here's the problem the problem is I really get jealous of your female friends. I think Kara has like a little thing for you. And I'm really uncomfortable watching it. Really, I didn't think that. She doesn't like me at all. Yeah, I'm a woman. I'm kind of feeling this. Yep, I yep, don't want yep. to stop you. It's your friend. Help me with this. You enlist your partner to help you and make them an active part of it so they're not fighting you. That releases their resistance. Help me with this. Right. What am I missing? Can you amend your behavior? I don't want to stop who you are. How do we work our way through this? It, it just changes the timbre of everything. You know? Yeah, Th this, is, uh, this is what you started. I'm going to read to you. With, because of, you've been talking, this is what people say. They love your approach uh, when you talk about uh, meeting someone and what you're talking about right now. They, Susan, with a bunch of exclamation marks, go, Susan. Uh, <laughs> Susan, I am so much, I am so much like you. That's from Smart Click. A uh, wild Zeppelin says, and this is why we love Susan. I, I can't even say it the way it's actually written. It takes away from it. But, uh, um, listen, we've got other things planned. True. We've said that to everyone here a number of times. Uh, different questions are here, which we are going to repurpose and put into other shows toward a bigger show. Hearts have been flowing for you freely. Many of you may think, oh, he's not going to get to my question. That's very possible for today. But I am going to do this. Susan, can you please explain this to everyone? You have just talked about honesty. And there are some other questions here we'll get to in a moment. But can you explain why it is important to activate self-love for oneself? Okay, this is a big discussion. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me start with something far more realistic and attainable. I'd like everybody to start to get behind their choices in life. If you make a choice with the best information you have today, which is all we've got, get behind it and trust yourself. If you see you need to amend it because new information is revealed, then amend it. Stop beating yourself up over the past, start looking for what you yep. want to create in the future, do your best job. That's the beginning of getting into agreement with yourself. Mm -hmm. When you start to get into agreement with yourself and agreement with your choices, self-esteem and self-love automatically begins to rise because you're not fighting yourself. Yep. Most of us would have a natural state of self-love if we weren't hearing a constant dialogue, much of it sociologically pre-programmed from either your parents or your community or yep. Instagram, like, you know, whatever, I'm not yes, thin right. enough, I'm yep. not smart enough, I'm not rich enough. There's a lot of external chatter that destroys our natural self-esteem. And guess what? It's perfect to make you buy somebody's product. So <laughs> see through it. Yeah, yeah, Nobody that's true. Would sell anything That's do you true. think women would pay twenty thousand dollars for a handbag if they didn't believe psychologically that that elevates their worth that's yeah. insane yeah right so we are all captive to certain systems with different regimes it doesn't yep. matter what 
your political country you come from, everybody's got their <laughs> own way to do stuff. Yep. The way to get off of that track and kind of get back to yourself mm -hmm. is to start to get clear on what you like, make your choices, learn, reassess, come yeah. back in and reformulate who you are until it matches most clearly how you really feel on the inside. And then you begin to like yourself because you're not fighting who you are. And a lot of people find themselves fighting who they are before they enter a relationship. And then now they're oh, fighting yeah. another person. And oh my goodness, they're fighting who they are. And it's just one continuous thing that leads to them not being honest with each other. And then there's no growth in the relationship. You've, you've spoken to a number of clients. I'm going to, we'll see your like over 5,000, I think it says in your bio, you, yeah. you've helped individuals. That's individuals. That's not groups. And, yeah, there's not, we're not in group settings like some other uh, coaches yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, yours is different. Um, but um, there, I, I'm going to do this with you right now. I, I, have, I have been planning this for almost about nine months before I asked you to, to come back. I've been planning this for a while. No, yep, I am planning. I'm going to do it right now. And so... Everything that you have seen today, ladies and gentlemen, have it has been on purpose to lead to this moment in time, in <laughs> which I get me. to. I, you got that right. I sure didn't. We're 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 on this show. I'm just going to do this for just hang in there, everybody, and for all of you newbies who've never been here. I often have different cards that I hold up and ask questions or thoughts or whatever, or I just mention certain statements that are on these cards. You can't see what they are, of course, and then you go ahead and respond to them. Uh, as, as, this is technically this is as close as I can get to a Groucho Marx show. So, okay. yeah, so, <laughs> okay. so that's really where I got it from. I'll be honest, that's where I got it from. And so then I have the yellow card. Now, the yellow card no one really wants, but they get it anyhow because it is the most difficult card card out of all of them. Now, okay. I am going to let you know when we get to the yellow card, but we of have course. gone one hour and twenty eight minutes, so I have to do this now because we're going to be ending okay. this show. Okay. In about okay. 10 minutes. So okay. I've got to get to this. So everything okay. that has happened before now is all scripted and uh, not scripted. It's all live, planned. We did we planned this show together, but none of it is to the point that it's, uh, well, under complete control. But here we go. I'm going to start it off this way. I truly like you, Susan. I really, really like you as a human being. I want to say that before you get mad at me for the fun that I'm about to have with you. So anyway, okay. <laughs> so I'm just, like, hey, you said be honest. So I'm just I'm being yeah, honest. You, you're okay. really so, a lot on this French. I knew you were going to say that. See, I knew you were going to say that. So everyone, I need you to like, comment, share, follow Susan. Like, comment, share, follow Susan. Do not embarrass me in front of my friend and don't at least follow her page. But okay. I need you to go a step further. I need you to subscribe to her YouTube channel. I need well, you to become you. a part of the Susan Winter family. You need to get winterized with Susan uh, in your life. So I need you to do that. Now, Susan, it says on her bio, love coach, relationship expert, motivational speaker. You've experienced all of that right now with her. We will be doing two other events. One huge event in which many will be able to participate in a huge group chat. And many of the questions here will facilitate that particular production and a whole lot more. But enjoy the ride. We're going to have some fun together, Susan and I, and you are invited to join us. Over 29 million YouTube hits. What is that like for you, madam? That's since 2016, so that's been good. We're almost at 30 million. That's every Sunday of my life I'm recording when you guys yeah, are yeah. out. And yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. But, when everybody uh, out is, is having, worked, having fun. Yeah. yeah, I've worked very, very hard to not be the last thing I did. And, uh, you know, going on Oprah was a really cool thing. I've never yeah. asked for publicity. I've never written yeah. anybody. I've never yeah. begged anybody. I didn't even have a I website. And I didn't want to be the last thing I did. I wanted to see what would happen yeah. if um, – I wanted to see what would happen – if I could close, put on blinders, like the horses yeah. in Central Park and run as hard and fast as I could at the yeah. very end of my life. Like I hit my peak when I was getting my Medicare card. It's like, Jesus, God, oh my <laughs> Lord. Like who hits their peak? I, I mean, this is insane, that. right? 
<laughs> and, and I'm not young. So I couldn't open up a laptop in a tutu and go, oh, hi. So, like Gary <laughs> left me. So I thought, what am I going to do on camera? There are and some tutu I, haters. There are going to be some hey, tutu haters for that comment. But, <laughs> yeah, but you know, they're adorable. They're 20 and they can do that. And I thought, oh, God, I need good lighting. And what am I going to do? So I only knew how to do what I'd done formally when I was in financial <laughs> news. And so I thought, I'm going to have to be my version of myself. And it might not be good for this audience. And then I thought, well, and I'm going to answer, I'm going to talk about the things I want to talk about. So yeah. I never chased an audience. I yeah, never right. chased an SEO like, oh, this is popular. Yes. I'll talk yep. about it. Yep. I would just hear conversations throughout the week or be working with clients and like, wow, this is a really, this is something I want to talk about. And so I think without meaning to, my naivete and lack of business foresight, like I didn't yeah. do, have a strategy, really was very helpful because it kind of came off as being different and new and, and real and authentic. So yeah. I think that, that people have seen that. And I yeah. also don't want to lead you to the edge and then yeah. drop you off like, oh, yeah. well, if you want to know the answer to this, then subscribe to my channel and call for, you know, buy this product for yeah. $1,100. I want yeah. to tell you, if you want to work with me, that's cool. But I'd like to have you have this because I think it's more important yeah. that people know it. Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah. it's more important that people can get functional. You so. are indeed authentic because <laughs> you <laughs> want growth on an authentic rate. You don't yeah. want, you don't want oh. fast paced growth or uh, oh, self. I prefer it to be fast. Well, well, you know. you know what, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But you yeah. don't, you don't, you don't want to go out and, and buy followers and subscribers. You're the, you're the real deal. Um, you are a best-selling author and a TV personality. True. You you are a person that then I can ask what I'm about to ask you now. After okay. touching on your bio and you mentioning those beautiful words, of how authentic you are, since that's the case, then authentically answer for everyone as succinctly as possible this question. What does it mean for two people to grow together romantically? Mm. it means to have the intention to try to stay aligned it's like the dna strand you will grow apart and it's uncomfortable but it's a necessary part as each individual grows in their own direction but that you start with the intention to continue to grow together because if the relationship remains static and confined, it will die. So if you can factor growth mm -hmm. into your relationship and find a partner with that mental construct, you will keep challenging each other. You will keep trying to bring out the best in each other. Absolutely. You will be honest with each other. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they'll push you and they'll yeah. be like, I don't want to do it. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah that's it's true. It's better that's for true. you, honey. You've got to yeah. stretch. You've got to go to yoga. I'm worried about <laughs> yeah. you fall over when you're walking, you know, whatever. So it's important that we try. Yeah. If we love our partner, it's important that we try to continue to find them as we continue to grow as an individual. Beautiful, beautiful. That was card number one. Okay. Now for card, now for card number, if I can grab it here. There we go, there we go. Card number two. Okay. Is that the so, yellow one that we fear? Uh, this, no, 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 no. Trust me, it's coming. Oh, so no. Else, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's coming. All right, so card number two. As, as simple and as succinct as you can, as uh, we're nearing the end of the show, what does it mean when a man tells a woman that he wants to get to know her better? In your opinion, what does it mean when a man says, I want to get to know you better? I take it at face value that he's interested romantically given that I can't see or sense the person, I don't know if that's co very polite code for I'd like to get busy with you, or it just means I want to know you. So until I, until I have context, I think it means what it says. So based upon what you just said, a woman shouldn't want to immediately want to start moving in, <laughs> moving, moving to get living together or, or get married, I should say. She's not going to sit there and just go like throw her life away and go like, oh, he wants to get to know me no. better. And then she can't sleep. That's what I'm essentially trying to say. She she loses 
uh, all sense of urgency for other things because he just says, I want to get to know you better. She doesn't lose it, right? No, that's code for I'm interested in exploring what's here. It isn't I'm code for I want to live with you and marry you. It is simply an intention to explore the possibility of what could exist. That's it, that was, right? That was, that was me trying to shrink wrap seven questions that I had just on that. So I had to find one phrase to kind of... Okay. Hope, hopefully for everybody that wrote that told me that, that hopefully that helps you there. Cause that, uh, that was a common theme. The guy says, I want to get to know you better. And the women were like, what does that mean? And so we'll let Susan answer that. And I think you did a great job. You need more info is essentially what you're saying, right? Well, it's an intention to explore the possibility of what they could be together. That's all it is. Not making wedding plans. No. Yeah, no. thank you. That, that's what some of them were saying. It was going like, no. wait a minute, no, calm no, down. No. Okay, no, so no. that's number two. No, no. I just want to, I string it. Okay, number three. Number three. Okay, number three, Susan, if you had to describe what it feels like to have a man give you attention and you're not interested, how would you describe that? Uncomfortable. If <laughs> it's sexual and romantic attention. Okay. Because now I'm under Uncomfortable. To, for me, yes. that's just for me. Because now I'm forced to do something with that. If I allow it, then it will continue and I'll give him mixed messages and the wrong message. Now I have to find a diplomatic way to stop it. So okay. that would yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the diplomatic way? I, and now, now I gotta ask, now I gotta yeah. ask that. I have to, we can't leave on it. Give some clues to some of these young women that when a guy is giving her interest, now we're not talking ladies about sexual harassment or something, you know, off, that's different. We're talking Man about- a man is romantically or sexually interested in her and she doesn't want it. Okay, yeah. Is that correct? What, yeah, how, do, how can you give some advice to younger women or anyone how to navigate that so it makes sense to them? Okay. number of different ways depending upon his vibe. One is if she absolutely concretely knows and he tries to make a move on her, say, I am so sorry, you have okay. completely misread my message and my intention, I'm, this is not a place I'm going. I'm not, or I have told men to really back them off. I'm a bad boy. Wow. You do not want to be in a relationship <laughs> with me. Trust me, I know myself. I would love to see it. I would love oh, to I, see you do it. I've said that so many times. I know I look interesting. You don't want to go here. Trust me, I'm telling you the truth. I'll be a better friend. You do not. You want need to a that. shirt that says that. I look interesting, <laughs> but you don't want to go there. That would work for you, my friend. You could pull that off. But anyhow, so a woman needs I do, to go because I mean I've had guys know me and their friend, and then they're kind of like they try and test that you know thin <laughs> ice. I'm like, dude, hey, they lean it in, they're bringing the like, shoulder, they're bringing the shoulder, and going like, how you doing, Susan? How you doing? And you go like, what? Are you, you go like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? All right, I have okay. said to other people, if I'm not interested, look, I'm not. If you absolutely know they're trying to date you, and say, look, just yeah, so you yeah. know, um, I'm not interested in dating anybody. Or yeah. if you can't get rid of them and you do want to date, you want to see them dating, you can say, I'm sorry, this is, this is not, this isn't the connection I'm feeling. Yeah. And that's yeah. always uncomfortable because we feel badly. Women really belabor this. Guys are just much more direct. And I think yeah, we, true. I think men just want to know yes or no. We can true. spend weeks trying to craft the argument and all they need is like, well, just yes, yes or, no. or yeah. no. Like That's true. That is absolutely what? correct. That is absolutely correct. This guy, I, name will be not Don't revealed, say it. said to me, well, I know, because it's so crazy. He said, so are you selling pickles or are you not selling pickles? I said, no pickles here. <laughs> pickles. <laughs> Seriously. Don't know. He said, he said, you may never, is. you may never tell me in private, but I'm oh, just going to keep asking you every now and then, hey, was it so-and-so? Hey, was this? I'll tell you. I just, I just said it. Selling pickles. I'm, I'm sorry. That one. Whatever you do, don't make a shirt that says that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just, that's that's like funny though. That's on. actually funny. Okay, so that was number three. Here we go. Here's the number four. Then we get to the yellow. So the number four, and just in case you're wondering, these are all crammed in questions or whatever that I received and that I've made them all because they were similar into something. So here we go. Uh, these are, by the way, from these are from my viewers. Uh, I oh, put a cool. few. I put a few feelers out, and they kind of like gave me. So here we go. <laughs> Number four. 
this may be the most embarrassing. Number four, here we go. Susan, if a man approached you and he wanted you to be, well, how can I put it? He wanted you to take care of him the way his mother was always there for him. What would you say? What? Cook Do you, clean you, take, you, you take care of him the way his mother took care of him. If he literally said that to you. Mm. Oh, my dear. I could <laughs> never be the woman she is. <laughs> you are so diplomatic. You're so diplomatic. She's is that when, is that when you would pull her, the di you pull diapers out? Go ahead. She's in a class all of her own, and I wouldn't even breach that territory. Uh, you kicking him to the curb, aren't you? You yes. seriously? Yes, you are. I was gonna say you're just you better than me. You, I just feel like you gotta go. You got don't talk to me like that. Just you gotta it's go. Standard, you would kick him. Sexy. That's disgusting. No, it's not. Would you treat me like my mommy? Yes. Who would? I'll be. I'm incredibly Wait. nurturing, but I'm not gonna treat you like your mommy. That's kind of that's kind of creepy. Sick, sick. Uh, uh, so when I when I had a few of those, uh, three, Do three for sure. Was it four? Wait, was it did four? A was... Did a number of these people ask you that? Oh, that you have. Real you, you have. I love my audience. So let me let me disclaimer before I start opening my mouth. And then, <laughs> I love I love the viewers, but I just want you to know, people have the most interesting questions. And oh, thoughts on their mind. You should well, emergency room. We talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never know what yeah. I'm getting. Yep, yeah. Yep. So that's that's number four. Now okay. the yellow card, and then we're going to be ending the show and getting ready okay. for our next event. Okay. And okay. Uh, then the next uh, event after that. But here we go. The yellow card is me. I'm just letting okay. you know today. The yellow card is me. These are what I'm going to ask you to do. I have three time frames here, and I want you to describe Susan during those time frames. The first okay. time frame, between the ages of 5 and 15, Susan Winter that we have here in front of us, the beautiful Susan E. Winter. I just love saying it that way. Susan E. Winter. I like going up when I say E. All right, so <laughs> Susan E. Winter. Everybody's laughing at us over here. They're going like, great answers. By the way, Anne is saying great answers. Everybody's laughing uh, at you uh, and your beautiful answers. Um, here we go. Between the ages of 5 and 15, Susan E. Winter. What, what type of young lady were you? What type of teenager, young girl were you between the ages of five, five and 15? Wait, hold on now. There's part to it. Were you funny? Were you nerdy? Or were you sexy? None of the above. <laughs> it's gonna, I knew you were going to say that. If I asked none you that question, of the above. you literally said none of the above. I was, I was, insecure. you know what? And I was going to say, I was going to say, you can't say none of above. And you said it. Okay, go ahead. You were insecure. I, I was insecure. I was a little chubby. I was fighting. I didn't want to fit in with the group that was cool because I didn't mm -hmm. like them, but I was terrified not to. Um, I didn't understand the world I was in. Okay. I felt like an outsider. Mm -hmm. I was very creative and I was very introspective and constantly in my head. Wow. I'm an only child. Wow. I lived in the country in a very remote area, didn't play with other children, went to every cocktail party and every adult event. My parents took me around. Wow. Wow. Um, and there was physical violence in my home, so I didn't know what it was like to sleep throughout the night. So that was my story. Wow. You were a country girl? Yeah. And, um... Well, not hee-haw country girl, but, I mean, I lived in a country. Hey, come on. See, that? Now, we, now we're having a conversation that none of these young, young folks know about. Cause I watched hee-haw. I watched hee-haw. So, so, so I had no choice. My father was from Arkansas. So um, what, I, what I wanted to ask you now is the next time frame. Between the ages of 16... And 25 years of age, between the ages of 16 and 25, how would you describe the Susan E. Winter between those ages, between the ages of 16 and 25? 16 to about 18, really lost, um, very rebellious, 
very headstrong and very confused. Mm -hmm. Once I got into music, insanely focused, hardworking, self-sacrificing Singing? Singing? of all. Yeah. Singing? Okay. Yeah. And once I was in college, I mean, in, I didn't go out. I didn't really, I didn't try to date. I, I had a boyfriend. I always had a long-term boyfriend, but just I wanted to achieve. So, yeah, in my 20s. When it, when it comes to the Susan between the ages of 26 and, well, sitting here with me today, between the ages oh, of 26 and... That's a I, huge I, gap. I deliberately do that. So between the ages of 26 and now, the Susan that is here today, back on Narc Abuse TV Network, hanging out with uh, Paxton here, and all of the hearts that are just nonstop on the screen. I think see, if they were able to do more... Screen. Okay, yeah. I... Man, I wish I... Listen, unbelievable. I'm just going to say this. If any of my... One of my daughters are here or not, maybe or not, uh, take a screenshot of that. Or somebody take a screenshot yeah, of the heart. My, because that way... Frozen. In the yeah, very if, beginning of our conversation. And I was so, afraid to push any buttons no, no, no. for fear so, I'll lose so you. Everybody do me a favor. Everyone that's watching, if you can take screenshots of us together today and send them to Susan. Wee. Of course, you know, of course I would love you to send me send me, you know, one or two. That'd be great. But make sure to let her know you were in on this show Aww, thank by you. taking a yeah. screenshot, send it to Susan with a positive thought. Now, don't Aww. be going weird and embarrass me in front of Susan now and be talking crazy stuff about your personal life. Just say a thank you. Take a screenshot Aww. and say thank you to her for giving up, <clears throat> excuse me, giving up her time uh, because uh, you have your show you got to do tomorrow, YouTube uh, thing you got to do tomorrow, correct? Right? <laughs> or, okay, so everybody, yeah. please make sure <laughs> that you uh, tell her that because she's giving of her time. But I just want to do this. 26, between 26 and now, yeah. What three words, what three words would you use to describe Susan E. Winter between the ages of 26 and now? What three words would you use to describe Susan E. Winter to someone who never met her? Well, better than the former, better. <laughs> um, better. Diverse. Diverse. Yeah. Um, Uno más. Oh, jeez. Um, intrigued. Intrigued. And, and I want to explain a little bit. I, yes, please. I, I started to live a life when I started to live authentically and trust myself. And that's why I talk about trusting yourself mm -hmm. and believing in yourself and making a decision and, and getting behind yourself. I went off script, whatever the world t taught me to do, and I tried mm -hmm. everything they said, and I thought, let me, let me try. What, what, what would I do? Not what they would tell me to do. What would I do? And I started doing it. I scared myself because I was going, everybody's going this way, and I'm going this way. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then everybody started following me because then <laughs> I started to realize that we all have this innate unbelievable computer within us that knows exactly what to do. And it's just that we got confused and didn't know where to find it looking out here. Mm -hmm. So my life became a page turner. I started looking at myself doing things for fun. <laughs> and it's like, uh, oh my God, what's she gonna do next? Oh my God, who's she gonna be this <laughs> decade? So wow. I started to, I, I, it, had I lived the life that I was prescribed to live, I would have known the end of the story and I would have been bored to death. There you go. I yeah. started to live an authentic <clears throat> life that yeah. even surprised me. That's why it was for the first time intriguing. Yeah. And I, and I yeah. kind of became proud of that girl because it took a lot of courage to go through the different levels of breaking through society's mm -hmm. acceptance. Yeah. And I should say rejection, only then to have greater acceptance. I mean, who knew? Yeah. So, do, do you remember the moments that come to mind that felt like or were indeed rejection? Oh, God. Yes, of course I do. Yeah. If, from if an entire community for loving a younger man that, you know, I wasn't going to give him up for them, but man, did I pay a price. Holy yeah. cow. A, lot, a number of individuals, before we end the show now, a number of individuals get that rejection and they feel isolated and alone. Yes. Just brief, briefly, before we go, speak to those people that may feel that. 
you're going through the eye of the needle. I know what that's like. It is hard, but you must know that there is, there is a whole new horizon on the other end. You are leaving what you never wanted to begin with. So get on board with that impulse because you are heading someplace yep. new and yep. any place new yep. is going to be where you are and people like yourself. And the thing that you were hated for in the past, they're going to celebrate you for in the future. That's my experience. Who knew? Yeah. Who, knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? After long, I love it. I love it. Um, you getting so much love on the screen. I will do my best to screenshot as much as possible Thank and send you. it to you. Uh, yeah, but you're I, I, based upon I, what we're saying, you're gonna get a bunch. You're gonna get a bunch of screenshots at this point because I've never asked anybody to do this, and I'm begging you guys, Amber, uh, Bree, zero zero seven, uh, many of you that are regulars here, uh, please, uh, Tim, Roots of Empath. Uh, he, by the way, he says I appreciate your honesty, Susan. Uh, oh, that's Tim. He's you. one of the He's loyal followers. Him, so yeah, and so I just want you to do me a huge favor, especially those of you who are regularly here. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, in the pack coach too, I'm sorry I didn't mention that, Anastasia. All of you, take a screenshot of the show and send it to Susan. You're gonna, Thank you, you so know, much. you and Lauren, 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 yeah. you and Lauren are going to sit there going like, what did Paxton just do? All these people are sending us this stuff. But please send it to her, DM it to her, send it to her, or send it to her via email. But whatever you do, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Thank and you. uh, I, I just got to read some of this before we go. Okay. Um, please do not judge. He, uh, he or she wrote, Oh, thank you guys for this amazing mind blowing session and making uh, it so memorable. You both are true role models. Oh, you're being more than kind. Thank you. That is so true. Um, and I got to read you Abby here. She says, thank you. Love this. Uh, there's so much more here, my friend, but we're going to need to go. Um, this is the longest show that I've ever done. One hour and 53 minutes. Uh, with you. I remember we, when I first got started, uh, Instagram would let me do more than 20 minutes. Uh, and then wait, get ready for what I'm about to tell you. You came on the show and that was the first. <laughs> no, I am not making this up. I am not making this up. And they actually allowed me to go beyond 20 minutes. That's why when you told me 20 minutes, I'm like, piece of cake. Not a problem. We can oh, do that. Okay. And I was trying to cram everything in. And the next thing I know, they're like letting me go. Normally, they would just cut me off. Wow, they they used to cool. just cut me off like at 19.9 59. Mm -hmm. I was done. They wouldn't let me go longer. You came on, and now I can do two hours. <laughs> so, Paxton, you've got thank good Thank you very content. much. I appreciate it. It's it. really coming from a good place. Thank you. You're very kind. Listen, everybody, show your love to Susan. We are done. Watch her tomorrow. I think you, you go live tomorrow, Well, I know. I record no. in my home. You record. You record. Sunday, and so, then I prepackage it and put it out got to it. answer their got questions. It. So uh, they're out it, hanging out. I'm probably at home with the lights and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we love you for that and uh, your honesty and everything. Everybody, Thank please you. connect with Susan. Subscribe. Thank you, my friend. Beautiful as usual and, and wait, elegant and as wait. always. Yes. Thank you so much. And I'm seeing you again yes. on November Yes. 6th. Yes. So we want them uh, to know that. Right? No. Yes, you are. See, the, this is the, product, this the executive the producer that she is. Yes. Say it one more time for us. November 6th. Saturday, November 6th at 3 p.m. Eastern. We're doing it again. All yes. Again. And we will be returning again November 13th. But we're, so you know what? Teaser, big, teaser alert. Big we're, we, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys figure that out later. Uh, we'll tell you more big, about big, that. Big, 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 big show. Come back. We're going to talk some more. Listen, thank you so much for this. Uh, you look at you. you. Beautiful, beautiful hair. Beautiful from head to toe. Beautiful Thank colors you, you always wear. Next time I'm going to actually get dressed up and do better because, you know, <laughs> I got to do better. Get my hair done. Sorry. Right. Thank you, my friend. Love you. <laughs> Love it. Done? Love okay. it. Yes, get my hair done. <laughs> we'll see you. Everybody take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Bye, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining bye -bye. us today. Bye-bye.